Hello and welcome to Mickeyology, where we take Disney movies a little too seriously in an ongoing effort to trace them to their most likely historical settings. I'm Austin Rathall, and today we are examining the animated classic that revived Disney animation and kicked off the age known as the Disney Renaissance. I'm talking, of course, about The Little Mermaid. Now, we're going to be focusing on the original 1989 animated film today, and we're going to save the live-action film for another video. So, let's dive into the clues and see if we can tell when and where Princess Ariel's story takes place. Clue number one, technology. There's one type of technology that makes the story of The Little Mermaid possible, and that's sailing technology. Sailing ships are what make it possible for Ariel to find all of her gadgets and gizmos at the bottom of the ocean. They're what make it possible for Ariel to see Prince Eric for the first time. And Prince Eric even uses a ship as a weapon to kill Ursula in the movie's climax. So what can we learn from the ships we see in the movie? All the ships we see in the film appear European. Therefore, we can assume that The Little Mermaid takes place somewhere in Europe or in a European colony. Eric's ship resembles several real types of European ships from history. First is the Carrick, which appeared during the early 14th century. Then there's the Caravel, which appeared at the beginning of the 15th century. And finally, there's the Galleon, which came about and developed in the 16th century. Now, by the Industrial Revolution, European countries were switching away from galleons, and they started to favor faster, shallower ships called clippers. Then, by the end of the 19th century, even clippers were giving way to new steam-powered steel ships. Since Eric's ship is clearly not steam-powered, and it's not shallow enough to be a clipper, we can assume that The Little Mermaid takes place sometime before the Industrial Revolution. As a matter of fact, it might take place long before it. If Eric is sailing in a Carrick or Caravel, then the movie could take place as early as the time of Christopher Columbus. Columbus took two Caravels and a Carrick on his famous 1492 expedition. However, Eric's ship has something Columbus's ships didn't, and that's steering wheels. Steering wheels weren't common in European ships until the 1730s. Therefore, the movie must take place sometime after that. Another piece of technology tells us that the movie must take place after the Age of Exploration, and that's smoking pipes, or as Skettle calls them, snarfblats. A bandit, bulbous, snarfblat. Tobacco is native to the New World, therefore Europeans didn't start smoking it until after European explorers had found the route to the Americas and brought the crop home with them. Tobacco quickly became popular across Europe in the 1500s, but the first European pipes were very crude and made of clay. Over the next three centuries, Europeans would become more sophisticated in their pipe design. And by the 1700s and 1800s, we start to see much more complex and beautifully carved pipes. The pipes in the movie are clearly not the early clay kind. Whatever these pipes are made of, they couldn't have been made any earlier than the 1700s which confirms that The Little Mermaid must take place during or after that time. I'm sure Disney loves that I'm pointing out the smoking paraphernalia that they put in their movies. Kids, if anyone offers you a snarfblatt, just say no. Another piece of technology we see in the movie is the concertina. And I swear, the concertina must be every Disney animator's favorite instrument to draw because it appears in a ton of Disney films. The concertina was invented in the 1830s, Therefore, The Little Mermaid must take place sometime after that. Clue number two, costumes. The costumes in the movie can also tell us when it takes place, and Ariel's dresses are particularly helpful. When she's on land, Ariel wears this pink gown, and later this white wedding dress. Now, in the early 19th century, women wore very form-fitting, straight dresses, the kind that you see in Jane Austen movies. Then, by the 1860s, fashion had swung in the opposite direction, and women were wearing enormous skirts with big bustles on the back. But between those times, from the 1830s to the 1850s, women wore dresses like Ariel's, with their puffed sleeves and large, but not too large, skirts. Now, the bell shape of Ariel's skirts suggests that she's wearing a crinoline, which is this cage-like structure of hoops that supports the skirt and gives it that big ball gown look. The crinoline became popular in Europe in the 1850s, which is also the exact time when white wedding dresses became fashionable. 
You see, before the 1850s, a bride would wear her best dress to her wedding, whatever color that dress happened to be. Sometimes it was white, oftentimes it wasn't. But by the 1850s, that had changed. Photography was taking off and people noticed that white dresses looked best in wedding photos because they would stand out against a usually dark background. Plus, in 1840, when Queen Victoria married Prince Albert, she wore a white wedding dress. So by the 1850s, white became the color for brides to get married in. Since Ariel wears a white wedding dress, there's a good chance the movie takes place in or after the 1850s. So far, we have a good idea of when The Little Mermaid takes place, but not where. One type of costume that often helps me determine where a film takes place is a military uniform, and Prince Eric wears two in the movie. There's this dark uniform that he wears when introducing Vanessa to Grimsby, and this lighter uniform he wears in the wedding scenes. Unfortunately, determining which country these uniforms come from is pretty much impossible. Not because the uniforms aren't realistic, but because 19th century European uniforms are so similar to one another that you could argue that Eric is from virtually any country in Western Europe. Here's a look-alike uniform from Croatia. Here's one from Germany. Luxembourg. Greece, Russia. Here's a pair of look-alike outfits from Austria. Here's a pair from Denmark. You get the idea. While Eric's uniforms confirm that the movie probably takes place in 1800s Europe, that's about all they can tell us. However, Eric isn't the only one who wears a uniform in the movie. His shipmates all wear a uniform that looks a lot like the outfit Venetian gondoliers wear. So the animators could be hinting that this crew hails from Venice, Italy. However, there's a problem. Venetian gondoliers didn't adopt this as their uniform until around 1958, when a movie about Venice came out that showed a gondolier wearing this outfit, which made the outfit popular among gondoliers. If you look up paintings of Venetian gondoliers from earlier centuries, you'll see them wearing all sorts of outfits that don't resemble the one that we see today. However, this outfit wouldn't have been completely out of place in 1800s Europe. British and French sailors were wearing striped jerseys like this as far back as the 18th century, and in 1858, France made the striped jersey an official part of their navy's uniform. Therefore, the Little Mermaid could take place in France, or at least a country influenced by the French, around the year 1858. Clue number three, diversity. Prince Eric's castle is home to a diverse staff. Not only do his sailors wear French-looking shirts, but he employs a French chef named Louis. One of Eric's maids, Carlotta, is probably Italian, since Carlotta is the Italian form of the name Charlotte. Eric's chief advisor, Grimsby, appears to be British. Not only does he speak with a British accent, but he shares a name with an old English town. So how could one castle be home to people from so many different spots in Europe? Well, in the 1800s, there is a spot where you could easily see Italians, French, and English people all mingling with one another. In the northern Mediterranean lies a famous stretch of coastline called the Italian Riviera. It connects the towns of coastal Italy with the coastal towns of southern France. If Eric lives in the Riviera region, it would make sense why he has an Italian maid and a French chef who's expert at cooking seafood. British families would also visit or even live in the Riviera during the 1800s too. Wealthy British gentlemen would go down to the Riviera to improve their health or to buy some beautiful seaside property. Queen Victoria of England herself even visited the region. With so many Brits going down to the Riviera, it wouldn't be all that strange for one of them to end up working for a royal family down there. Clue number four, geography. So far, it looks like The Little Mermaid takes place in the 1850s on or around the Italian Riviera. If we want to pinpoint the movie's exact location, we should probably look at the land itself, along with the plants, animals, and buildings that inhabit it. Eric takes Ariel on a tour of the kingdom in the movie, and we see palm trees growing there. A little later, we also see flamingos. At first glance, these species might make us think that the movie has to take place in the Caribbean. Sebastian, after all, has a Caribbean accent. However, there are not one but three types of palm trees that grow in Europe, and you can find flamingos in southern Europe as well. So it's more likely this movie takes place in Europe than the Caribbean. As for Sebastian, European countries imported a lot of stuff from Caribbean colonies, so it's possible Sebastian got to the area because he ended up on a European trade ship at some point. This would also explain why he's the only main character in the movie with that accent. 
Since this is a Disney princess movie, there's also a big beautiful castle for us to analyze. Eric's castle is very unique with its fat round towers and red orange spires. A lot of people online have pointed out the resemblance between Eric's castle and a Swiss castle called the Chateau de Chillon. While there is a pretty strong resemblance, the chateau is a lot more angular than Eric's castle, and we know that Disney filmmakers had a different region in mind when they designed it. According to director John Musker, quote, Roland Wilson, he's a great draftsman, designed the Prince's Palace. He did a drawing that we loved that combined these Mediterranean elements, making it a palace unlike any other Disney fairy tale palace, with the whitewashed stucco. He was really going for a warm, southern Mediterranean feel. Therefore, Prince Eric's castle must be in the southern Mediterranean, not Switzerland. There are several real Mediterranean seaside castles that resemble Eric's, including Bled Castle in Slovenia, Kyrenia Castle in Cyprus, Castellamare del Golfo in Sicily, and Bocale Castle near Tuscany, Italy. This suggests the film probably takes place in southern Europe and probably in Italy. And Disney may have confirmed that the movie takes place in Italy when they released a recent book. Aside from that John Musker quote about the palace, Disney filmmakers have said virtually nothing about when and where this movie is supposed to take place. However, in the book The Disney Princess, published by Disney, historian Charles Solomon wrote, quote, the Disney artist moved the story to a warmer, sunnier sea that suggested the Mediterranean, probably off the coast of southern Italy. Now, if the movie takes place off the coast of southern Italy, then the most likely candidate for its setting would be Sicily, that large island right off the tip of the Italian peninsula. So, does Sicily check all the right boxes? Yes, it does. All of them. Sicily has palm trees. It has some great flamingo habitats. 19th century Sicilian soldiers also wore uniforms similar to Eric's. And guess what the name of Sicily's ancient capital city was? Eric's. It's also home to the Castellamare del Golfo, which resembles Eric's palace. Its capital city, Palermo, bears a pretty strong resemblance to the city we see in the movie. Notice that lone mountain in the background? Sicily is also on the correct side of Italy that it could have contact with France which would explain why Eric's sailors have French-looking uniforms and why there's a French chef in his castle. Conclusion Based on the movie's technology, costumes, diversity, and geography, I'm placing The Little Mermaid on the island of Sicily in the 1850s. So, that's my analysis of The Little Mermaid. Please let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments and let me know when and where you think The Little Mermaid takes place. Also, tell me which Disney movie you would like me to analyze next. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on social media. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.